Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I wanted to explain the augmented matrix. Um, in the previous couple of videos, when we talked about inverses, I used this idea of having an augmented matrix and using row reducing. Uh, for example, I had a, a matrix A and I augmented it with the identity matrix. And what I did is I row reduced this left side to the identity matrix. And what I was left with on the right side was the inverse of our matrix A. So basically in this video, what I wanna do is I want to explain what exactly this augmentation bar is, why we use it and why this works, why, why we can row reduce this left side to the identity matrix and why we get the inverse of A on this side. So I wanna make you guys more comfortable with using augmented matrices. So if we had this example right here, we have this matrix on this left side and on the right side of our bar, of this augmentation bar, we have the identity matrix. And essentially what we can think about this as is a giant matrix that is composed of two three by three matrices. So when we do our row operations, like take the second row and subtract four times the first row, or take the third row and subtract seven times the first row. When we do these operations, we apply this operation across the whole entire row, including both the left and right side of this augmentation bar. And the reason why we want to apply this operation across the entire row and across this bar is because we want to apply this operation to this matrix as well. So when we row reduce the side to the identity matrix and we get something like 1000101, these same operations that were applied to this left-hand matrix in order to get to the identity matrix are also applied to this right-hand side, the identity matrix itself. And we said that this comes out to be A inverse. And the reason why it comes out as A inverse is because the operations that were conducted on this matrix, which we will call A, were also performed on the identity matrix, which is this side. So the operations that transformed A into the identity matrix are also applied to the identity matrix itself on this right-hand side. And the important thing to know is that any operations performed on the identity matrix basically programs the resulting matrix to do whatever operations it does when you multiply by something. So let me illustrate that example real quick. So this is the identity matrix. And if I were to multiply the identity matrix by three, what I would get is three zero 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 three zero 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 three, right? Because we just multiply every single component in this matrix by the scalar three. So what I have done here is I have applied the operation of scalar multiplication to the identity matrix. And what I'm left with is a matrix that scales anything that it is multiplying by by a factor of three. And we can illustrate that idea. Let's say that we have the vector one, two, three, so if we were to multiply this vector by three times i, or three zero 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 three zero 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 three, then what I should get is three times this vector. So if we were to actually carry out this multiplication, what we would get is three times one, which is three, and then using the second row, we get three times two, which is six, and then three times three, which is nine. And what we can see is that this vector is in fact three times this vector. So just by applying the operation of scalar multiplication by three to this identity matrix, the resulting matrix, which was this guy right here, now multiplies anything by three. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's take, let's take the identity matrix, one zero 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 one zero 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 one, and now let's do the operation of a row swap. Let's swap these bottom two rows. So what I get is one zero 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 one and zero one zero. So now what this matrix should do is when I multiply anything by this matrix, it should swap the last two rows. 
So again, if I were to take a, my new transformed matrix or my matrix that is now programmed to swap the two last rows and I were to multiply it by this vector one, two, three, what I should get is a vector with these two positions swapped, right? So let's verify that. So what I get is in this first row, I get one. The second row, I get three. In this third row, I get two. So we see that yes, this is indeed the case. And again, the reason why this happens is because of the operation that we applied to our identity matrix. So now let's revisit the idea of having a matrix A, augmenting it with the identity matrix, and then applying row operations to reduce this left-hand side to the identity matrix. And what we get is something over here. So as I reduce this matrix A to the identity matrix, what I am doing is I am applying row operations not only to matrix A, but also to this identity matrix. So now what this identity matrix is programmed to do is it is now programmed to take this matrix A and turn it into the identity matrix. And since we define an inverse as A times A inverse is equal to the identity matrix, that means that this side right here must be the inverse of the matrix A. And again, that's because we applied row operations to our identity matrix that reduced our matrix A to the identity matrix. Therefore, our transformed identity matrix that results from the row operations is now programmed to turn a ma our matrix A into the identity matrix, which by definition is A inverse. So that's why we use this idea of augmentation. That's why we use this bar is so that we can apply the same operations to A to the identity matrix. And also, whenever we start solving AX is equal to B, instead of multiplying both sides by A inverse in order to solve for X, instead what we can do, and in fact, sometimes we have to do it because not all matrices have an inverse. So instead what we do is we actually use this idea of augmentation. We take our matrix A and we augment it with B. And then what we do is we row reduce the left-hand side to the identity matrix, and what we're left with on this right-hand side is our answer X. And that's because by applying the operations to both A and B that reduce A to the identity matrix is equivalent to multiplying B by the inverse. And since A inverse times B is equal to X, that's why we get an X on this side. So hopefully this clears up a little discomfort with using um, this augmentation bar right here. It's really nothing to be intimidated by because what we do is we just simply treat it as a giant matrix. In fact, we can pretend this bar isn't even here. As long as you apply your row operations across both the left and right hand side of this bar, then everything should be fine. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.